It may be because the images are so, well, pretty. After all, in real life, the brain is a bit of a gelatinous blob with no obvious hints as to what's going on inside. And then we see it, a red patch that shows where brain cells are supposedly firing rapidly, or a blue splotch that seems to show the craving of a recovering cocaine addict. It just makes intuitive sense. Neuroimaging pictures like fMRI and PET scans are very impressive and deceptively simple. Even non-scientists who couldn't make sense of a microscope slide can instantly see the difference between two brain images, where the amygdala in one is glowing bright red and the other isn't. But do these pictures give you valuable information? The answer, say neuroscientists, is a resounding yes and no. The curse of neuroimaging is that it often makes things look so clean cut, and that leads some journalists and even some researchers to leap to conclusions. We know, for example, that feeling anxious will cause the amygdala, an almond-shaped structure deep within the brain, to light up on an fMRI, showing that it's very active. But the logic doesn't work the other way around. If the amygdala is glowing red on the image, it doesn't mean that the person is anxious. You get the same result on the fMRI from a strong smell, from seeing something that's sexually arousing, and from lots of other things. And that's why many neuroscientists are growing concerned by some of the interpretations of these and other images. The power of the picture is outweighing the logic of the research. In fact, one recent study found that when college students were asked to evaluate the scientific reasoning behind a series of bogus news articles, they said that the one that had a brain image was more scientifically sound, even though the image had absolutely nothing to do with the content of the article. I'm Dr. Cheryl Olson.